You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. We're joined in the studio now with Lauren. It's all part of our regular book club book review. We'll be uh, reviewing this month's book, looking at next month's book. And I think we'll be talking a little bit about the Kindle as well. Lauren, it's uh, always great to uh, see you. Always look forward to this slot. Thank you very much, Daniel. I'm happy to be back. Well, I was hoping you could introduce us to uh, this month's uh, book and uh, talk a little bit about the plot. Yeah, so this month's book was Stardust by Neil Gaiman. Um, It might be familiar, the title Stardust, um, to some listeners, because it is a film and was a very popular film in cinemas uh, in 2007, I think. Um, It had Ricky Gervais in it and uh, Claire Danes and Michelle Pfeiffer. Very, very good film. Um, And it was based on a book, which I didn't actually realise once I'd seen the film. I didn't realise it was based on a book, but... I wanted to read something and put um, out for the listeners to read something to do with fantasy because that's quite a um, popular genre out at the moment and I hadn't really touched much on the um, the fantasy genre. Um, so Stardust is a novel primarily about a, a young chap called Tristan who is um, who lives in a village called Wall. Um, not much goes on in Wall and um, he hasn't really left the village before. He works in the village shop, etc. and has fallen in love with one of the young ladies that lives in the village called Victoria. Um, um, Victoria isn't very interested in Tristan and um, when Tristan asks uh, for Victoria's hand in marriage she says um, if you go and find me a fallen star which has just passed over above them as they're um, as they're chatting um, if you bring me back that fallen star then I will marry you um, so off he goes um, leaves wall and enters a, um, a sort of magical magical wonderland really with uh, unicorns and witches and talking trees and we follow Tristan and his journey to find this fallen star um, who turns out to be a young girl who he doesn't really get on with very much when he first meets her Um, and we also follow um, two separate stories of two people who are also trying to get to the star a um, a witch who isn't a very nice nice character and will sort of do whatever it takes to get hold of this star so her and her sisters can become young again and um, we also follow the story of of um, Septimus, who is one of seven brothers who want the star so that they can become king of their um, the kingdom that they live in. So you follow three stories, and it's just a really wonderful sort of adventure story, really, and I really enjoyed it. I mean, it does stick a lot... The, the film does stick a lot to the book, but there are bonus bits in the book that didn't happen in the film, and likewise, there's going to be things in the film which they've sort of embellished upon on the, um, on the plot. And, yeah, it was just a really nice introduction to fantasy for me. And um, I'll chat more about that when I, when I review the book. At the moment, we're talking to Lauren. It's all part of our regular book club book review. We're reviewing Stardust at the moment. Thanks, Daniel. So, um, Stardust is a book that is, as I said, is quite a short little book, and it's in the genre of fantasy, which is quite um, popular at the moment, what with things like Game of Thrones being on television and a lot of films um, from the fantasy genre being made at the moment. Um, I enjoyed the book. I thought it was really um, well paced, and I love the story, and I love the way it flicked in between the three storylines that we were following, Tristan and the Star, um, the Witch, and um, Septimus, and I thought it was just really it was a really well put together story that kept me interested the whole way um i didn't love it because there was parts of it that i thought were and i shouldn't really say this as a book lover better in the film <laughs> so um although i really did enjoy the book i didn't love as much as i love the film which is really rare for me because i often often much prefer the book to the film i don't know if it's had something to do with the fact that i watched the film first and um i've watched we watch the film a lot it's my dad's favorite film um so we do watch it a lot but it just there was something that was lacking in the book, I thought, compared to the film. Um, that being said, I did enjoy it. And um, I've also got a few recommendations here for anybody who's wi- uh, wishing to get into the fantasy genre or read Stardust and thought they'd enjoy it. Thought they'd enjoyed it. So I've got Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. Obviously, that's a very popular um, book series that's been around for years and years. Um, it's a, counted as a classic and there's been many films made of that. And I've read those books. And it's very similar to Stardust in 
the way that there's a, a journey that you're following and you're following different groups of people and there's one thing that they're all hoping to get at the end and when I was reading Stardust I kept likening it to um, to the Lord of the Rings trilogy um, another fantasy book that I've been told is wonderful is Waylander by David Gemmel um, this is one myself that I haven't read and I don't know anything about the plot so I do apologise but I'm told that it's a really good book to get you into the fantasy genre and it, it sort of eases you in and it's a nice short read um, Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin that's another book series which is obviously a hugely popular TV series at the moment um, and I have read the first book of that um, I don't remember much about reading it actually and I read it a few years ago I really want to give it another go now that I'm trying to get into the fantasy genre more um, and I just remember there being loads of characters and it being a bit hard to keep track of everyone but I am going to go, go and give that another go um, and then Terry Pratchett who I'm told is the absolute king of um, of fantasy books so um, a couple I've got written down here are The Colour of Magic and Good Omens and he's also got another um, one that's been released uh, recently just after his death um, which is called The Shepherd's Crown so there's some books that if you enjoyed um, Stardust or if you think that you, it, you've you listened tonight and you thought oh that sounds like something I'd be interested in then there's just a couple of books there that you might enjoy too well, I think we're going to talk uh, a little bit about the Kindle next and uh, using it to read. Yeah, so um, I read Stardust, this month's book, on my Kindle. Um, I hadn't read a book on my Kindle for a very long time. Um, I, I love books and I love buying books and having them on my bookshelf. And um, I thought, well, I think it's time to give my Kindle a, tr a, a try again now. And, and I, I rediscovered it, really, and I, I loved reading on it and I will be reading more on it. Um, but I just thought, oh, wouldn't this be a great opportunity to have a, a little chat about why people do like their Kindles? so much um, when I say Kindle I do mean e-reader but my, my e-reader is a Kindle so I always call it a Kindle so when I'm when I'm saying Kindle, I might mean any sort of e-reader. I know there's quite a few out there. There's a Nook, um, a Kobo. Uh, you can get an app on the iPad. Um, I think there's one called an Onyx or a, and a Books. Um, but when for, just for the purposes of this, I will be saying Kindle. So um, I, I put it out on Facebook and on Twitter just um, to ask people what, what they liked about their Kindle. And I got so many responses. I'm just going to go through some now. And um, I discovered a few things about my Kindle that I didn't even know just by asking people. So that was brilliant. So so, um, Rachel said that it was easy. It's easy to access the books I need, and finding new reads is easy through Amazon. So, I think that's what means is that the more books you order on your Kindle, it will come up with recommendations for you, which is brilliant. Because if you're ever sort of stuck for something to read, then you've got ready-made recommendations for you there. Um, Roz says that she loves her Kindle as she's able to download a book in seconds. She can adjust the text to read it easier. She can read in bed without a lamp. She can see how many minutes are left in a chapter. And she can file books into collections and look at her previous reads. Um, Lynn said it's lightweight so it's easy to carry around in a handbag and easier to hold and read. It's great for holidays as you can take as many different books as you like without taking up luggage allowance. And books are cheaper on the Kindle to buy. Um, I had... Deanna says that she reads the on the Kindle iPad app and she loves it. She can read all night and not disturb her husband and that she loves that she can look up words that she didn't know on the online dictionary. So this is one of the things that I discovered that I didn't actually <laughs> know about. Um, so apparently on the Kindle, which I'm definitely going to be looking into, um, when you're reading, if there's a word that you don't know, you can highlight it and look it up on the online dictionary, which is amazing, um, really. And um, a few people mentioned that. So um, Emma here said that it's easy to use even when she's laying down down or snuggled up in bed she really loves being able to look up words in the built-in dictionary and it's much more portable um, and Ed um, says that he lives in China and the local English bookstore is 300 miles away so physical books would be pricey to transport um, so that's perfect for him to use when he is um, in China um, he also got so used to the dictionary function he sometimes taps the pages of real books to find definitions um, and similarly um, a, a Bailey got in contact and said that she's an expat in France um, so that makes finding books especially new releases in English almost impossible so the Kindle is brilliant for that otherwise she would be lost out here um, a lot of people said that they use their Kindles in different times. Um, so I've got Ruth here that said that the Kindle app is a godsend and it got her through a lot of night feeds, which is brilliant. Um, and I've got another thing here from um, Steph who said she loves the Kindle because she can use it not only on the Kindle itself, but she's got the app on her tablet and her smartphone and it keeps it synced so she can continue where she left off on whatever device she has on her, which is amazing. <laughs> and I've just got loads of people just absolutely raving about Kindle 
Jules. Um, and another one, another function that I didn't realise about, which is amazing, is that aside from the obvious, um, Phil says that aside from the obvious benefits, um, he's able to look up the meaning of the words directly from the page using the cursor, which he finds so easy. He says the other thing that he likes is that the, if you read the name of a character and want to remind yourself who they are, it is so easy to search and see when they first appeared and, and each point from then on. So I just thought this was amazing that everybody had so much to say about Kindles and how much they enjoy using them. And I just wanted to finish on something that Alex sent in and he said he loves his Kindle. Three words, easy, accessible and instant. Any book he would want, any time he wants. We've been looking a little bit at the uh, Kindle and uh, I think you're next going to talk about uh, books and what people prefer to uh, read. Yeah, so um, I, I did... I was just chatting about how much people love their ki uh, love their Kindle or their e-reader. Um, and as I said, I, I really enjoy reading on my Kindle or e-reader, but my heart lies with books, and I absolutely love books. I buy far too many books <laughs> for my small flat that I live in, and um, I just love the the feel of a book when I'm reading a book. I love holding a book and like even things like the smell and just front covers and everything. I just, I, I love books. Um, but some people would much, much prefer the Kindle now. But I've, I've got a few comments here from people who also love books or or things that they find lacking in, in, in an e-reader that they can still get in books. So um, Laurel says that she has the Kindle app on her iPad and she finds it very heavy to hold and read. So she much prefers a real book. Um, Sarah says, I prefer to have a physical book to read because I like to keep hold of any that I really enjoyed. Kindles are definitely the way forward for reading, but my bookshelf would look pretty naff if it was just empty apart from a Kindle sitting on it, and I do agree with that. I can imagine a bookshelf would look pretty naff with just a Kindle on it. Um, Lynn, um, who had some brilliant things to say about how much she loved her Kindle, also says that um, a battery never runs out on a book. Um, she also misses going to bookshops um, now that she has her Kindle, and sometimes there's never be nothing better than holding and smelling a proper book. Um, Mandy says, I do miss having a book to see how many pages there are until the end and I also enjoy buying books at the moment for my granddaughter I think it's better for children to have books rather than a Kindle um, and Daniela says she likes both but she would never have only her, ki her Kindle she loves a proper book and she likes to feel and smell and visually seeing how much she's got left to go before the end and Bailey says that real books are priceless and I can't agree with her more like I absolutely love books and um, just, just having them I think is a real treat and I just think they make such a lovely gift and things like that and since my um as i said quite a lot of my friends and family have kindles and since my dad got a kindle i've just run out of things to buy him really for birthdays and christmas because i always used to love buying him books and now he's got his kindle he just gets it all on there so i I, I can see why Kindles are the way forward and I totally agree with them and think they're a brilliant invention and I think they've taken off much better than anybody thought they could but my heart still lies with physical books. <laughs> And uh, I think we're next going to be uh, introducing you to next month's book. So, yes, I've wanted to read a classic um, in the book club for a while and um, I thought with it being next month being October and being Halloween that we would go for Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. So this is a, I would like to call it a quite an, an easily accessible um, classic. It's just over 200 pages long. Um, most people are familiar with the plot line, so it's quite easy to follow. And um, I've read it a few times in my lifetime and um, I was looking to read as I said a, a classic over the book club and I just think this would be a really good introduction to classics if you haven't read a classic before um, or if you had read classics before then this is a really nice one to revisit especially at this time of year when it's a bit spooky <laughs> outside and um, obviously Frankenstein has lots of um, connections to Halloween so I just thought that would fit in really nicely um, when I come to chat about it next month in October into Law and Order as part of our regular monthly book club book review. Of course, we were reviewing uh, Stardust as uh, this month's book, and I was just hoping you could refresh our listeners what next month's book's going to be and uh, also go over those useful contact details and, of course, cover your uh, YouTube book channel as well. Yes, yeah, so next month we will be reading uh, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, and I will be back on Monday, the 12th of October at 8 pm to discuss it. So if anybody has read it and wants to answer some questions or um, get in contact, Contact with me you can contact me on twitter at lauren the books um or you can contact me via email at lauren and the books at gmail.com or as daniel mentioned i do have a youtube channel which is also lauren and the books so um you can get um onto that by going on www.youtube.com forward slash lauren and the books and um i do plenty and plenty of videos there about books um, one of my most recent book um videos that i've done is a book haul about all the books that i bought in august and september and then i review the books that i read for the month uh, that i've read that month 
month and then books that have got coming up that I'm going to be reading. I do individual book reviews on some certain books um, and I've got a few book videos up my sleeve. I think this Sunday I'm going to be putting one out there about um, book to movie adaptations and ones that I've enjoyed. So yeah, um, feel free to check out on there and that would be really great. And I'm looking forward to coming in on the 12th of October to discuss Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Well, we look forward to seeing you then. Thank you Thank very you. much once again. That is Lauren with our regular book club book review slot here at the Monday Night Community Show this evening. <laughs> 